great day. Welcome to She Who Believes, the podcast. I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. Well, today's title is called The Rules of Love. And so when God gave me the title, (laughs) initially I was like, Lord, you know that's like one of the things I don't like. So first of all, I've always had this thing um, that really just kind of makes me cringe. And I know that some people listening might think, well, you need to really learn these rules. But you can you hear all these different rules of love, like what you should and shouldn't do. And most of the things I learned were about, or I heard about, women talk about of how to fool their husbands, their men, to be manipulate, to be manipulative, and those kinds of things. And I I get that we have to understand that men are different beings, that they're different than we are, and that there are some things you tell them, some things you I get what the, the topic of it all, but I always just dislike rules being placed on love. I, I don't know, but I just, it always bothered me. And even when it came to um, even being within the church of certain rules that sometimes we are, uh, we impart our beliefs or our feelings onto particular things. And I'm not saying we don't follow rules and I'm in no way dishonoring or saying that you don't follow the, the, um, the commands of God through the Bible. That's not what I'm addressing. But what I'm just sharing with you is that how my heart's always been in a place of like, just feeling like love is love, like just love people, right? Now, that doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. I'm a counselor, and I literally just got done doing a seminar this weekend about boundaries, what boundaries represent, how they are freeing, how they um, let people know what you can and won't accept in your life, right? So not talking about any of those things, but just addressing that how sometimes, you know, this, this world, let's just be honest, in the social media society, you can watch a video, you can, after this video, or something else might pop up in your YouTube feed or um, you know, on a podcast link and you might say, hey, let me check out this podcast. And they will tell you that you've got to have all these rules and they will make love look like something that is really not. And it's, it doesn't look anything like what God intended for it to look like because it doesn't look like him because the word says that God is love. But so anyways, the title of this week is the rules of love. And immediately my heart went to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to be reading this for you guys today from the English Standard Version. And I'm going to start at verse 4. And um, I'll just keep reading. I'll probably go down to um, about verse 8 or 9. But it reads as follows. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with with truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. So I used to read this verse, right? And I would think about like, what does this really mean, right? I I knew that the Bible talked about God being love and I tried to connect the things, right? I don't know if you know me, if you know anything about me, and I hope that if you've been listening to this podcast for some time or um, you're a coaching client or someone who follows me on any of the socials, that you know that I love people. Like I love loving people. Now it doesn't mean that I, I, I because I love y'all, let you walk over me again. Boundaries are real. They're freeing. They're necessary. Doesn't mean that um, because I love you. That, that means you have access to me whenever you feel like it or that um, you get to mistreat me just for the sake of love, right? And so that's one of the things that um, I think is the reason why God led me to the scripture to kind of just give a little insight on what love really is, right? What is love? The Bible tells us that God is love and then it tells us about how he loved us, right? Any Anywhere in the Bible you can find 
you can read about God's character. You can learn about his heart, who he is, that he's a loving God. And one of my biggest things, one of my missions, one of the things I believe is my purpose in this earth is to allow people to, to help people to understand the love of God by allowing God's love to shine through me, right? Um, I think it's important that we know that we, our Heavenly Father is someone that does love us because if not, it is so easy for us to live our lives in condemnation when we've made mistakes, when things have happened to us that seems unfair or that are unfair, that aren't okay, like they happen to us because other men have free, free will and they make wrong decisions. But that we know that our God, that, that he is not in heaven just waiting to condemn us. God isn't a punisher in that way. Like there are consequences for things that we do. Just like for instance, so you all know that I have children because I talk about them all the time. And you guys may know if you listen for any time that I'm a, that I'm a single mom. And um, of course, my children are adults now, but you're a mother and a father forever. So at this time, I'm currently a single mom, but believing to not always be single. Um, but anyway, I'm a single mom, but my kids are important to me. I love them. And one of the things I decided as a young girl, um, not always knowing if I was loved, not always um, feeling loved, not always being um, built up and appreciated. I made a decision as a young girl when I started to pray for my children, not even knowing about like, okay, who am I going to marry? Who's their father going to be? Or even what that took or, or required for me to actually have children. I made a decision. I knew that I was meant to be a mom. And so I made a decision that I wanted my children to always know that they were loved by me. That no matter what they've done, that I will always be there for them. Now, I may not always agree with the things that they've done, the decisions that they've made, but they can count on me to love them. They can count on my love, right? And so that for me has been a big thing. And so the more I lived my life and learned about the love of God, that has helped me love my children and even love others, right? So I'm not saying this like I perfected this love thing or I'm per perfect in any way. I'm just sharing with you um, why this is a big deal for me to talk about love today and how I literally believe that love is everything and that it changes everything. Um, and I love the fact that the Bible references God and says that God is love, not that he loves. So it tells us that he loves that, that because he loved us so much, he gave us Jesus and that Jesus died because of his love to, to you know, to restore us back um, to our relationship with God. But I love that it says that he is love, like love is what he is. And I, my mission is to be loved in any situation to be loved. That doesn't mean I won't ever be stern or, um, you know, respond in a way that lets the opposite person that I may be um, encountering or dealing with know that, hey, you can't cross certain lines. But my purpose is to be loved in this earth, to let God's love shine through me. I actually prayed. Um, some time ago to God that when I hug people that when I hug them that they will feel like they're being hugged by God because I know what the love of God did for my life and how as a 12 year old who was um, getting ready to commit suicide how he showed up how he loved me enough to talk to me until my mind had changed till I knew that God loves me so I knew that he had a purpose for me until I knew that he was real, like really real. I had gone to church my whole life. Uh, at that time I was 12, but, uh, and you hear about it, but to have God come for you, I, I have this thing I'll say, Lord, thank you that you came for me. Um, a several months back, um, I had a situation come up and I was good in about two days after that event happened in my life. I found myself frustrated and angry and just in this place of honestly rage and um and I say that with no shame because we all have moments where we have rage whether it is we're angry over something we did over something someone did to us um if we are just frustrated about something and I said Lord I need you to help me I need you to help me I need you to come right now and he came for me through the a phone call of a friend like literally it wasn't seconds after I cried out to God and even though I was screaming and crying and begging God to help me still be in a place of love I answered the phone and my friend was the face of God to me at that moment she heard me she listened to me and she loved me 
right? She loved me. And you may think I don't have friends like that. I promise you, if you pay attention, God will put people in your life. It can be a stranger. I'm talking a complete stranger. I know I shared on this podcast before. In the past, I was in a grocery store one day and I was struggling just to try to stay in a place I was tired and cranky. Um, but, but beyond being tired and cranky, I literally was just battling some different things, spiritual things, um, emotional things, prayers for my, my family, my one of my children in particular. And just all these different things that I felt like so many things were hitting me. One thing after the other, after the other. Blow after blow, like it was crazy, right? And so I'm in this grocery store and this lady has um, a, a shopping cart. She has one kid in the shop, and this actually was a stroller. She had a kid in the stroller and a kid was walking. And I was standing there and it was busy, it was Walmart. But the lady literally came up and basically almost hit me with her stroller. And I was like, Jesus, this is the last thing. Like I need, like I'm, I'm, hey, borderline, right? Trying to live right, trying to do the right thing, trying to let you in. Um, and the lady's face was even worse because it was like, yes, I know I almost hit you, get out of my way. was kind of like what her face said to me. And so I had to take a moment and, and take a deep breath. But even though I was taking my deep breaths and okay, God, my usual, I wasn't feeling the calmness, right? But I just was still still determined in my mind I was going to let Jesus win. Well, the lady had a little girl, the child that was walking. She couldn't have been four good, maybe three or four. And so as I'm saying, God, I need you to help me still be loved. The little girl said, hey. I said, hey. So anyways, first of all, kids have this special place with me. And I love children. I do. I had two, but I love children. I love children. I could just, I love children. So this little girl comes up to me with her blonde hair and blue eyes. And she says, hey. And I said, hey. And the minute she said, hey, like my whole heart just started. My whole everything just started. The anger started dissipating, the frustration. And I could feel it still like I was struggling. But the little girl says, hey, I'm shopping with my mama. And I said, I see that. <laughs> it was like, I was still trying to get there, but I was like, I see that, you know, like I see that. Um, but as I heard myself and I heard my tone, I, I, it was like the Holy Spirit checked me, right? So I said to her, I said, I see that. And she's like, yep, I'm, I'm shopping with my mom. And so I said, are you helping your mom? And so of course, then I'm having this conversation with this little girl, right? And um, she's talking about, we're talking about bread because we were standing there getting bread, right? So she's just talking about her mom and she's just talking about, she got a little sister, I think it was a little sister. And um, the little girl's just talking to me, right? So I'm gonna tell you, God loves us so much that he wouldn't leave me where I was still struggling just a little bit. Because they walked away and, um, oh, I'm not gonna cry on this podcast. <laughs> but they, but it, it, it's happy tears because when I think about how much God loves us, right? So they had walked away and the little girl ran back to me and she said, first step, bye, I'm go I gotta go. Cause her mama was like, hey, let's go. And she's like, bye, I gotta go. And they, they were probably a good four or five feet away from us, right? The little girl turns back around and she runs back to me and she said, I gotta go, but bye. She goes, but first, high five. And so she throws her hands up. And so then that, that, that just, kind of broke that wall down again a little bit more, right? So I high-fived her. And then she said, fist bump, fist bump, fist bump. So I fist bumped her. And the thing that was beautiful was now the mom who was totally being rude to me had turned around and was looking over her shoulder with the biggest smile on her face of pride of her daughter. And then she said, and Kissy. And at first, of course, I'm looking around because I'm like, okay, this, I don't want to have this little girl kiss me and her mama like freak out but the mama was still smiling and it was like almost everybody on the aisle was looking and I leaned down and that little girl kissed my face and the love of God was in her kiss it just was and everything total freedom I just started praying in the middle of that aisle and I said, Lord, bless her. Never let anything kill her spirit. Don't let anything destroy this little girl's spirit. Just protect her heart. So I just started praying over this girl, praying over her mama, praying over her family. They were walking away and I'm there in the aisle, just blessed in the name of the Lord. For that moment, that moment of love that he showed to me. 
And so I'm going to go back to this scripture because it says love is patient and it's kind. So I had to practice patience, which isn't always easy, right? When I'm frustrated, I could have made any excuse and every excuse that felt justified that this woman ran up, blocked me and was so rude to me. But I had to find patience. And that little girl helped me find patience through her kindness, right? Love is patient and love is kind. So her kindness made me be kind back. It says love does not envy and it's or or boast, right? So that means that when when you were showing love, we are not envious of people, and people around us that love us aren't envious of us. Doesn't mean that the enemy won't show up with try to bring envy. He'll try to make you doubt that God will bless you the same way he blessed someone else, or he'll try to get you to convince you that God won't do it for you, but he'll do it for other people because you did this or you did that or you had this horrible past. Well, I'm here to tell you today that that's not true. God has even been talking to me about that specifically because I have been in a place, and I said had because I'm making a declaration. I have been in a place where um, I have been praying for specific things, and I knew that God had promised those things to me, and I did all of the checklist kind of things. I followed the rules, right? How we're talking about rules of love. Well, you did this, and you tithe and offered, and you prayed, and I'm not knocking those things. I live by those things. They are things that I will I will proclaim are necessary, and you do them. But I had gotten into this place of like, um, Lord, like, hey, I'm believing you for this, right? I'm believing you. I'm trusting you. And I always, always celebrate other people. I pray for others and I expect for them to be blessed. Um, Just because we are not at our core envious, we have to be mindful and make sure we have and keep a heart of love so that when the enemy tries to show up to make us envious of others we can knock him down and say hey our God is not just this but he's this and that so he did this for them and he's gonna do that for me you get it this and that so he we can celebrate people who are not envious of them we can and it doesn't we don't boast and what it means by boast doesn't mean that you don't brag on God doesn't mean that we don't get to testify of his goodness or say that he's done something great for us but we don't boast as if it's we did it ourselves so that's what it means by that I had someone not too long ago say to me I needed to be careful when giving my testimony that I didn't become prideful and I said to that person, like, are you like sincerely saying that to me? But what someone shared with me later was that that person did not have a full understanding of this actual particular scripture. Because um, at first, of course, I'm going to examine my heart. Like, Lord, if someone said something to me, did I come across in a particular way? And uh, someone else close to me said this to me. They said, anyone who knows you knows that you love people. Anyone who knows you knows that that is not your heart. They know your heart. So um, that person just didn't understand the scripture where it says to not boast or to be mindful of being prideful because literally in everything I give God glory. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm per- I've perfected anything even in me giving God glory. But what I'm saying is this, I want you to have a full and a complete understanding of the word of God. And when he says that love does not boast, he's saying that, hey, you don't you don't boast about what you're doing and how great you are and, and like some people will use their boasting to make other people feel small to make them feel as though they're beneath them to make them feel as though they're so great in and of themselves and so then that's when pride can come in but when he's talking about boasting he's not talking about we cannot brag on the love of god or that we should not um give our testimonies because revelation 12 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimonies now back to um, for, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, we're still in verse 4, but it says it is not arrogant. So I think I just covered that as well. And it also says that it's not rude. I covered that as well, that we don't just um, do things to make people feel bad. Like our love won't let us do that because we know what that feels like, the majority of us, right? We've had some sort of experience with that. And so my love, so for instance, my children, we, if, if you have children, whether they're adults or younger children, sometimes they'll do things that make you feel disrespected, will kind of tick you off a little bit or make you feel like um, angered or feel, um, hey, I'm justified to come back and hurt your feelings because of what you said. But my love for my children, there have been times where my children have done things and it's bothered me, it's hurt my feelings. But I am very careful 
I'm not perfect at it, but I'm careful to make sure that I respond to them in love. Because the reality is that I, I go back to what I tell my children. No, ch- check what you know about me. Reflect on what you know about my heart and the way that I love you. So even if my actions did not display that love, don't trust that moment of anger or frustration. Trust what you know about me and about my heart. Now, that's not an excuse for me to do something and not apologize to my children. I don't ever do that. If I if I do something, I own it. But it doesn't, my love doesn't let me be rude to them um, when I could be. And I could feel justified at being rude to them. My love doesn't allow me to do that. Love doesn't rejoice over wrongdoing. So if something someone did or something bad happened to someone, um, we don't um, rejoice over that. Like your love doesn't let you rejoice over that. Like um, I remember growing up and I would see other adults or parents and they would tell their children something and the child wouldn't listen whether no matter how old they were. And then when that child fell into a situation, they would re- basically literally rejoice over it. Look, I told you so. I'm so glad that happened to you. I'm glad you got to get what you deserve. I literally saw people do that to their children, right? But the reality is is that God is saying we don't rejoice over wrongdoing. We show love. That that doesn't mean that you have to tell them that they're right or agree with what they did. But you you can disagree with something that someone did, but also show them love. You don't rejoice over anyone's downfall. There's a version of the Bible that says that. Don't rejoice over someone's downfall. It says, but it rejoices in truth. Love rejoices in truth in truth the truth of god's word the truth in every situation um love lets you tell the truth even when it's easier to not tell the truth or when it's more rewarding to not tell the truth we've all been in situations where like in a moment you may lie about something out of fear because you're like oh my god if i tell the truth what's gonna happen and sometimes you can do it so quickly and you're like why did i say that why did i do that that wasn't my heart but there was fear present and you allowed fear to reign in that moment as opposed to truth. We've all had those moments, but the beautiful thing is that God loves us so much that he loves us enough to forgive us when we when we make those mistakes, right? So love rejoices in truth. And it says love bears all things. So I got a new revelation of what that means. And that doesn't mean like, say for instance, if I'm in an abusive relationship, that I'm just supposed to bear this man or woman, because some women beat their men, unfortunately, um, that I should stay in this battered or abusive relationship because I love this person and I'm supposed to bear all things. No, that's not what that means. God gave me a a, a new revelation of this because um, he showed me something about an individual. And so God showed me that, yes, it was a fact that they actually did that particular thing, but that that person is not who they used to be. So your love for them is going to bear that thing. So even though their past may come up and it may come up that yes, they did these particular things, your love is going to cover that. Your love is going to bear that because that was something that they did in their past. That was something that happened. And sometimes saying love bears all things. Again, it can go back to when I was talking about being a parent. Um, Your children may do certain things, but your love is going to bear with them. It's going to cover them. It's going to say, yes, you were wrong. You faltered in this area, but my love is going to still be here. It's going to still be present. It's going to still be a thing that you can trust and have security in. And then it says that love believes all things believes all things now that doesn't mean that if I know you're lying to me that because I love you I have to believe that particular thing you told me that's not what that means and believing all things that love allows us to believe all things my love can let me believe in my children let me believe in someone who may have have fallen or lost their way but my love will allow me to believe in them again my love will allow me to not to never stop believing in them just because they made a mistake because we make mistakes all the time and God still trusts us he still believes in the purpose that he put on the inside of us he still believes in those gifts and callings and he won't ever repent for giving them to us so he believes all things and so love allows us to believe all things it lets us hope all things so because we can trust in God's love. We can trust in his love. We can believe everything he says. We can hope for every promise that he's made to us. 
And then love endures all things. So God's love endures. It stays with us. It doesn't stop. It doesn't end because we faltered or we failed or we consciously and then purposely made mistakes. Um, it, it doesn't leave. It doesn't stop being love. Um, someone recently sent me this song. It's entitled Congratulations. And they, that person said, this song's been in my spirit all day long and I felt I was supposed to send the song to you and when I tell you guys this song has blessed my spirit and for the life of me I cannot properly pronounce or even quite remember the artist her name is Ada and it's an African song an African name and I believe she's it's spelled A-D-A or A-D E-Ada E-D-B or E-B but anyway there's a verse in that song that says who can battle with the Lord? Nobody. And then she says, who can change his mind about me? No one. No one can change God's mind about you. He made up his mind about you a long time ago. He made up his mind to love you. He made up his mind to bear with you. He made up his mind to strengthen you, to protect you, to guide you, to provide for you. So his love lasts. The rules of love is this for you. Accept God's love. That's really the rule. That's the rule that God wanted me to communicate this week. There's someone who's who's struggling with accepting God's love through a new friendship, through a new relationship, through someone who may even want to make you their spouse. Um, but you will may be struggling with accepting that love and it's it's acceptance. That's really been the message really across all of the all of everything that God's having me to speak about this week, it's acceptance. And so the one rule of love for you to focus on this week is acceptance. Accepting love. It's so easy sometimes for us to give love, but not so easy for us to always accept it because of past things. Because maybe someone was boastful. They rejoiced over wrongdoings. Maybe they didn't bear with us long. Maybe all we needed was them to bear with us just a little bit longer as we allow God to perfect us in a certain area. And so now we have a fear of accepting love. Well, I want to encourage you this week to accept God's love and accept it even if it comes in a different form than you expected it to. Even if he shows it to you in a little girl in the grocery store who is of a totally different nationality than you, um, who is whose mama almost ran your feet over, but accept his love in whatever form he sends it. Because see, that day I wanted God to remind me that I was loved. I needed God to show forth his love towards me in a way that would break the things that were trying to bind me emotionally and spiritually, right? And he sent it in the midst of a, 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 a moment of frustration, a moment of, of a spiritual battle. He sent it to me through a blonde haired, blue eyed, beautiful little girl who was so in tune to God that she turned around after showing me her initial act of love and she came back to me and she hugged on me. She fist, high fived me, fist bumped me, and then gave me the sweetest kiss. And even as I think of it now, I can still feel her little cold nose on my cheek when she kissed me and her lips just touching me and how God just broke everything off because and through his love. So accept the love of God, accept that it's real, accept that he loves you, accept that salvation is indeed for you. And then decide to be the face of love in your home, in your community, in the grocery store, even with the lady who might've tried to hit you with the buggy. Let God use your heart today. Well, this has been the podcast, She Who Believes. I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you back here next week.